to run through um, the second example. This is from your notes packet. This is the one we didn't do in class yesterday. And I kind of just wanted to run through this and make sure you could see the whole process beginning to end here. So um, this is another new, <coughs> excuse me, Newton's formula example. Um, it says Brad drops a ball off the side of a building that is 15 meters tall. So remembering that my formula looks like this. and then I'm going to plug values into that. It says write an equation describing the relationship between the height and the time, and which is exactly what Newton's formula does. So don't let that throw you off. When it says write a relationship between the height and the time, that's Newton's formula, okay, is a relationship between the height and the time. So my equation is going to look like this. H equals negative one-half times, remember for G, it's always going to be either 32, this is for G, 32 if you're measuring in feet, or 9.8 if you're measuring in meters. So um, this problem is measuring in meters, so I'm going to plug 9.8 in for my G value. And then the T just stays a T, so this is T squared plus, this is my initial velocity. Now you'll notice in this problem, it doesn't give you an initial velocity. Normally it does. Normally it would say the initial velocity is blah, blah, blah. Well, if he drops the ball off the side of the building, he's not putting any force behind it. So dropping the ball would mean an initial velocity of zero. So I'm really putting in a zero for t, I'm sorry, a zero for v in front of the t. Okay, that's this here and then plus my initial height, which is 15. Now I'm just going to clean that equation up a little bit. So negative 1 half times 9.8 is negative 4.9. So this is negative 4.9 t squared plus this 0 t in this problem, because that's a 0, can just cancel out. And then you've just got a 15 over here. So that's your equation, negative 4.9 t squared plus 15. Let's get that into our calculator. Okay. So in my calculator, under this is under the y equals button, so right under here under the window, under the screen, I put y equals, and I'm going to say negative 4.9, x is here next to the alpha key, okay, so x squared plus 15. Um, I'm going to set it back to a normal window just so you can see the process of changing my window. Actually, on this one, it's not terrible. I can see the left and the right. Um, I, I just want to be able to see the top, but let's go to our window button. Remember, x represents your time, and the smallest amount of time you're ever going to want to see is zero, okay? And if you're dropping a ball off the building, it's probably not going to take more than five seconds for it to hit the ground. So x is my time, and I'm going to say between zero and five seconds is all I need to see, okay? And then for y's, um, this ball is not going underground. Okay, so we're going to say that y min is 0, because y represents your height, and the smallest height you want to see is 0. And in this one, actually, you can get from the problem how high you're going to need to see, because you're just dropping the ball 15 meters, okay? So if you're standing 15 meters up and drop the ball, it's never going to go up higher than 15 meters. So 15 is really the highest I'm going to need to see. I'm going to set it at 20 just so I can, just so I'm not like skimming the top of the graph. I want a little bit of space up at the top so I can see what's going on. So I went a little bit higher than what I know that I need. Let's look at our graph. Okay, and this one, it might be bothering you that we can't see this other half of the parabola, but remember in this case, we're just dropping the ball off the building, so it's just going straight down. That other side of the parabola is what would happen if we were going back in time and we're not going back in time. So um, this is all we really need to see of our graph. And you'll notice I didn't even really need five seconds, okay? If you wanted to go back and fix that, you could. But um, like if you wanted to make your x max smaller. But as long as you can see your picture, you're okay. All right, next question says, what is the height of the ball after one second? Well, for that, I can go to the calc menu, choose value, because that's what's going to let me type in a value for x and then type in one second. So x equals one, hit enter. So at one second, there it is right there, you're at 10.1 meters. So to do that, I did calc value, 
made x equal to 1, and I got an answer of 10.1 meters. And I know it's meters because this whole problem has been in meters. Okay? It says approximately how long does it take the ball to reach the ground? Well, hit clear to get the numbers off the bottom of your screen. These little dots down here are your seconds, so it's not even quite two seconds. You could say like about 1.7 seconds. Okay, about 1.7 seconds. And again, to do that, I just counted the dots at the bottom. And finally, at what time is the ball nine meters off the ground? This is a tougher question, and we didn't do one like this in class yesterday. Um, I don't think there's one like this on your test, but it's good for you to see, okay? Um, if I want it to be nine meters off the ground, really what I want to be able to do is plug a nine in for H, okay? I would like to put a nine in the equation for H. Now, if I were solving that by hand, I could put a nine there, and, oh, I guess I should look at this equation. If I could put a 9 here, I could subtract it over here, and then I could solve with the quadratic formula. Doing it this way, you have to do kind of a workaround. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to go down to y2 and just type in a 9. And what that's going to do is that's going to show me where 9 meters is. So I'm going to type in the 9 and then hit graph. And you'll see that line is showing me where 9 meters is. And so I want to know... How much time does it take me to hit that point right there? Well, you can get that from the calc menu. And what I really want to know is the intersection of those two curves. So I'm going to choose option number five. And, um, oh, my cursor's off the screen. And I know that because this is negative. Okay, so I'm going to use my right arrow. And you'll see those numbers kind of coming up to bring my cursor back on the screen. It was just like that from the previous problem. So, okay, my cursor is now blinking somewhere on the parabola. It doesn't matter where, somewhere on the parabola. And it says first curve. You're going to hit enter. That's your calculator's way of asking you, is this the first line you want me to look at? You'll notice that when I hit enter, now it says second curve and your cursor's on the line. Well, yep, that's the second line that you want to look at. So you're telling your calculator, I want the intersection between this line and this parabola. And then when it says guess, hit enter one more time. And it tells you that the intersection, so you'll notice there's your height of 9, the intersection is at 1.1 seconds. Okay, so for that I used calc intersect and found that when x equals 1.1 seconds, my height is 9 meters. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit of everything in that one. Um, if you're having trouble with a specific piece of this, I did make some specific videos for the individual parts. So, like there's a video on writing the equation, there's a video on setting the window, there's a video on all of these commands. Okay, so um, check those out and then get going on your um, Newton's formula homework that I gave you in class yesterday.